Uh, Bleach, what are you doing? Bleach. Bleach, don't do it. Uh... Don't, ble Bleach. Bleach, no. No, don't. Don't do it. Bleach. Bleach. Fine. Fine. Hey. You want to make a video essay? So I'm pretty sure if you clicked on this video, you know about 2BGT, the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. Where anything you think can be done in Minecraft will be done, and probably has, where you can say anything you want in the chat and kill any player without threat of a ban. The server I fell in love with, even though it's known as the most toxic Minecraft server in the world. Come with me as I recount my experiences in the absolute hell that is 2BGT and my undying love for LARPing in a block game. The influence of YouTubers on 2BGT and why people play 2B2T even though the server owner is crazy and the TPS is always too. For the love of the community, the great builds, and the groups I've met along the way, this is 2B2T, the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. If you've ever played 2BGT for the first time, it's quite the experience. Going onto some random website to download a hack client, probably bricking your computer in the process, giving it 13 viruses, and probably giving your credit card information to some random guy in North Korea. I think I bricked my computer. <laughs> Once you log onto the server, you get met with the absolute bane of new players. The six hour wait just to get into the server. <laughs> we gonna build some nice, b uh, yep, yeah, okay, it's full, it's full. Hey, I mean, it's only gonna be like a 20 minute wait. It's probably 430, uh, uh, okay. I mean, on Hypixel, that's only like 20 minutes. Well, how, how, how long could that possibly be? How long could that possibly be? Let's just, four hours and 20. I guess I'll come back in four hours. Once you log on to the hellscape that is spawn, you're probably gonna walk a little bit and almost immediately fall off a lava cast. <sighs> Once you respawn, you'll probably try to escape to the nether because that's what you've heard you probably need to do. But guess what? The old players know that too, and they're probably going to trap a portal. And once you're trapped in a portal, they're probably just going to look at you and laugh, and bully you in chat. Somehow, if you escape spawn, you're probably going to go down the another highway. You're going to run, run a little bit more, run a little bit more. Guess what? You're going to run a little bit more. And guess what? You'll probably go out in portal about 50,000 locks out. And then guess what? You're going to go, and you're going to exit. You're gonna exit the portal, you'll meet a nice dirt shack, look at the signs a little bit, and then log off. My experience isn't unlike many others. If you ask around, you'll find that that experience is basically the same, and similar and different in its own little way, as finding and playing this unique server with its unique history is unlike any other servers. TBTT was first made by two friends named Housemaster and George Bush 420, with a simple premise, anarchy and freedom, a lot like the servers they had on other games such as Gary's Mod. The history of TBTT, a server that has stood for almost 10 years, is one that cannot be disputed, from the great builds on the server such as Space Valkyria. to the sheer magnificence of Mu Mega Base. The server has attracted years worth of great builders, and the server has also attracted many years of great and legendary people, such as Pyrobite, Jared2013, PopBob, FitMC. We continue to do these, but it continues to grow larger and larger, and the community continues to get larger and larger. A server where you can join and most people join to make their own stories, groups, and builds in this desolate environment. A history, no doubt, that has been a major push for people joining this server. Oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, and like, uh, 
a lot of history is on the server. Like, uh, you can like go back to like 2012. You can find faces from there. Uh, uh, well, 2B2T has a very long history, of course. Uh, you know, before June 2016, not much is very is really known about it, um, especially in the very very early days of 2B2T. But since 2016, uh, you know, people have, you know, uh, the history of 2B2T is a lot more well documented. So uh, that's all in the, really in the form of videos, uh, especially on YouTube, because at the time, I mean, ever since 2016, it's, there's been so many 2B2T videos. And uh, that documentation, I think, is. Uh, a real a really great thing from you know because before then there was almost nothing but then again that history before all that documentation kind of it gives 2b2t like this mysterious past if you know what i mean what what interests me more than the builds is the community of people that built them and so when i look at the history of the server i'm much more captivated by the relationships that players formed in a place of anarchy than what they, and, and maybe the results of what they made as a result of those relationships that they formed than the actual like builds and bases themselves. And that's kind of always the way, always been the way that I've interacted with the community. It's always been much more about the communication and playing and interacting with others much more than the physical manifestation or digital manifestation of blocks in any particular space. I joined personally listening to friends and YouTubers recounting the history and the documentation on this server, and I've been dramatically influenced because of it. And no doubt, 2B2T has been dramatically influenced through the use of YouTubers. Hey, Bleach, um, I've been playing 2B for like a long, long time now, and uh, I, I've realized something. What is that? I, I think I'm a 2B2T YouTuber. Oh, oh god. I think I'm turning Do into- Do you post cringe? I think- Are you cringe? I think, Are you cringe, Lark? I think- I think I'm- I think- I think I'm a fit MC. <laughs> Are you cringe? Are you cringe? No, I'm not cringe, I swear. I think you're cringe. I, I, I think I'm, you're cringe. I, I swear I'm not cringe. You're LARP. Cringe LARP. 2B2T YouTubers are a divisive subject on the server. The reason why Sato86 left the server, the founder of the incursion. The reason why the 2B2T community has launched not one, not two, not even three crusades against new players, but eight canon incursions. Another incursion called the Purge, now possibly a tenth led by Joey Coconut. If you don't know what an incursion is, it's basically when a bunch of old players go to spawn and bully a bunch of new players by killing them over and over again. And the overused meme of 2B2T's slave labor also happened during these incursions, where old players force new players to mine obsidian for them for three hours through use of slave labor. <laughs> The server relationship with its YouTubers has been contentious to say the least. Like many of you, I found 2B2T through use of YouTubers like YouTubers such as Fast Vincent and Sal C1. Unlike most on 2B2T, I think these YouTubers aren't necessarily a bad thing, and to the annoyance of some people. I can't necessarily say anything because I'm subscribed to FitMC, and Sal C1 has friended me on Discord. 2B2T has been dramatically changed through these influence of YouTubers. Such as YouTubers such as FitMC, Sal C1, and Baron Dome. YouTube's love hate relationship with 2B2T is impressive to say the least, but these influence of these YouTubers to the influx of players and general awareness of the server cannot be understated. Even now, 2B2T has been dramatically changed influence through these new players who have joined because of these YouTubers. Whether it was Russia in the 4th incursion, or Antvenom in the 6th incursion, and even now as new friends continue to join the server through the relative rise of the 2B2T YouTuber known as FitMC. Asking around, you'll see that some have strong hate towards these YouTubers, and others have a more mixed view of them. I think it's like, it's good. I think it depends on the situation. Like for Rusher, I think he joined like at the war. Well, I mean, because like 
he was the person who, like, you know, for the old bases on 2B2Z, they're gone because of the, you know, rushers and stuff like that. And, uh, I think, like, now, like, for YouTubers now, like, I think it's good because it revives the server, I guess. But, like, back then, it was pretty bad if you are like, an old player or something. I've always seen it as positive, um, at least from, like, a storytelling perspective. Uh, the videos that are produced are fun, uh, whether they're, you know, accurate uh, to, you know, historical fact or not. Uh, it, it's not really much of a concern to me, uh, because even the way that I play 2B2T is like, you know, if, if there's something that can kind of produce an interesting story, whether a video is made on it or not, that's the way that I like to enjoy the game. Uh, For the most part, it's positive. I mean, I, I guess currently the, the top three 2B2T YouTubers would be FitMC, myself, and Baron Dome. Those are, those are the top three currently for 2B2T. Um, and with those three YouTubers and all the other, you know, smaller YouTubers, uh, you know, in between, uh, I, it's, it's a really consistent flow of, you know, uh, new players and content. And I think, uh, that balance makes, uh, you know, ma makes the, uh, player counts and just the player base on the 2B, on 2B2T, um, you know, pretty consistent, I would say. So life at the end of the day, right? Like fit videos, a lot of them might be a little bit, well, filled with misinformation uh, and like over exaggerated stuff, but it kind of keeps the server alive for the public, right? When you have those uh, communities, or like when you have, when you have groups like Masons, Guardsmen, they don't really care too much about that uh, or even my eye, uh, but like, I know it keeps the it keeps the public face of the server uh, active, and I think like I don't really have a problem with them making videos about it. So the influx of new players in the past has allowed the older player base to make some of the most long-held and cherished memories and builds on the server, such as the Great Spawn Trench or the Incursions, and the new players that survived spawn have gone on to create the most influential groups and builds, whether it was the Gs or Mediclock and the great spawn symbol, or the new players that went on to form the IIS, who made the great nether highways that stretch hundreds of thousands of blocks in the nether. Even now as I speak, with some of my friends like Hermetic Lock or Baki, they joined because of YouTubers, such as Rusher or Anvenom. Unlike some, I think the influx is ultimately good. With the influx of new players, the toxicity has been mixed with the kindness of others, and I found some of the most charitable and kind people in this anarchy. I found groups like the Face Punch Republic, the IIS, and many other groups, and I've made so many good friends that I still talk to as we bonded just screwing around Spawn. The influence of YouTubers on 2B2T has been immense, and the influence of those people joining the server because of them have gone on to create some of the most breathtaking and most magnificent builds and groups. However, I must concede, YouTubers have somewhat turned this server into a hyperbole. There is rarely ever a plot to this anarchy. Unlike some who will say that there is a story, antagonist versus protagonist, or anything of the sort, there is none. You'll rarely ever see a story unfolding, but rather two or three groups being talks to each other, or being bored and griefing each other. 2 2 t is not a place of kings. Never place of heroes versus villains, like the NFE group versus Pop Bob. 2 2 t rarely ever has a storyline in this wasteland. And if you join and expect that, you'll be sorely disappointed. Because 2 2 t is one thing. Anarchy. The ability to do whatever you want without getting banned. 2 2 t is one thing. And that is freedom. Something. Let's uh, take a quick ride in my boat. I just want to show you something right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, hop in. Alright, okay. okay. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Um, Bleach? Yeah, what's up? Aren't we supposed to be in the water? I know, I don't know. We're, we're vibing. We're flying. Pretty nice. Bleach. We just, uh, Bleach, right we are flying. 
this is normal. What are you talking about? Bleach, bleach. Boats don't fly. Uh, I'm pretty sure they do fly. I love this server. I love its history, I love its build, I love the freedom. And while some people left because they were expecting more like epic incursions and epic backdoors, I was left wandering the another highway with three dirt blocks and hope not to die. I looked around the massive highways that the SIG and IIS had made with people putting countless of hours into building massive highways to expand and help people, even though they knew this would probably get griefed. I met people like Sal C1 and Fast Vincent, Diggin Builder, the president of the Face Bunch Republic, Cheshead, and even the democratically elected leader of 2B2T, Joey Coconut. As I travel around, I realized something. I was in love with this server, and many more felt the same way. You know, it's just a really interesting thing, you know? There's no other there's no other server like it. Every other server, you know, has all these uh, long lists of rules and you know even the um there even the many alternatives there are there are to 2b2t they just don't have that old map that 2b2t has the old map is just uh makes 2b2t what it is especially right like everything that we're doing is fun uh leading infinity encoding is fun um the anarchy environment i think what never changed really with 2b is that you can always do and say what you want to um so yeah and the people definitely the people the people in infinity encourage my friend that's kind of what i've done um most of my projects are within 10,000 blocks of spawn because i can't be damned to travel out super far anymore and i think that a lot of collaborative work can be done at spawn as well so you know i find interesting projects that i want to do and if people want to join me on those then you know, they're free to do so. And that's kind of what the uh, crux of it is, doing something interesting and inviting others to come along with you because I don't want to play single player Minecraft with lag. 2B2T is anarchy. And while some take that freedom to destroy and spread hate, others simply find that with this freedom, they can uncheck their creativity, do whatever they want, build whatever they want, meet whoever they want, make friendships with whoever they want. 2B allows people to make history in the server and be the protagonist in their own story. It allows them to make their own story. It allows basically them do whatever they want. The community on TBT is nothing like it's portrayed on YouTube. Where will we ever see epic battles, epic incursions, epic other things? But you'll find in this anarchy is generally down to earth people who just want to play a block game with you. If you go on 2B in an effort to gain clout and become friends with legends, you're going to be sadly disappointed because that's not what 2B is. 2B has allowed me to find friends in this toxicity. 2B has made, allowed me to find friends in the anarchy. 2B might be known as the most toxic place in the world, but I found the most charitable and friendly community in this server. In the end, most of them just do it because it genuinely makes them happy. And it genuinely does. It's not the anarchy feeling. It's my friends. And us genuinely enjoying each other. And not really having a constraint from another like server admin or server mod to tell us what to do. It might be the history of 2P2T that also gets a lot of people to join the server. But when people come to a common project on this anarchy, it really does bring the entire community together. If you ask around, regular 2B players have one defining memory that kept them on the server, that has continued to keep them on the server. My best memory from 2B2T, probably the first time I found a dupe stash. That is probably my, my best memory. Like, uh, we were just walking in the nether and I just see all of these chests and shulker boxes appear in my uh, ESP and I'm like oh my gosh and that moment right there is I will remember that for the rest for the rest of my life at this point oh, right, we had a lot of drama the though. entire sun <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> no but what I'm trying to say um at this time it was like it was a really rough time in the II because a lot of infight drama all of that shit and we really were at like 10 15 people right and the Obsidian Sky project wasn't a 10-15 people project. 
it really really wasn't and we had no bots no nothing so it was like we either finish it or we disband the group right like we e we are either successful or that's it and um so my favorite memory i one day um or basically after two days everyone knew that this project is completely retarded <laughs> after two days after two days everyone knew this project is just too big for us for a group of 10 15 people it's it, it's too big we don't have buried homos we have nothing and that was after two days and the entire project lasted 30 days so after two days i put out an announcement asking do you guys really want to do this like this is not fun this is not fun this is not this is just grinding this is bullshit this is not enjoying the game right and everyone every single one of the ii members and of the that, that's half a year ago um every one of those people they all said without asking like without saying anything else yes we will finish this right so and i i was so close to just like i was so close to just closing the group ending the group but they were all supporting uh, me and the group and then we finished it after 30 days and i swear to god people have fucking ptsd from placing obsidian but um that was i think that was the you didn't use like schematica or something like the that the moment no, we couldn't we had nothing we had um first of all we used normal future scaffold later on we used so uh, liquid sorry. liquid bounce that a sounds, random client we found. So then we horrible. used Salhek. Now uh, it, it it was it was horrible. It was it was fucking horrible. But there is the video on YouTube uh, of the last moment when we finished it, and and it's just a game, right? But uh, we got so emotional because like it was it was it was so insane. And we're... I like to. I think I have to go back really far uh, into my playing experience. When I first joined the server, I played by myself like most people, and I had to, you know, gather resources on our, on my own. There were no dupes or anything. I had to make my vet shield from scratch, and there were no gapples or anything. And at one point, uh, my base had been griefed, and so I decided to, you know, make my way back to spawn, and I joined the Vortex Coalition. And we did these, like, interesting spawn activities, and I was playing with a ton of people, we were, you know, like 10, maybe seven or eight people standing in the same three chunks, just uh, playing the game, traveling around. Elytras were enabled. We were flying around with our Elytras. And it was just so much fun and so much or so different than the way that I had been playing Minecraft and 2v2t until that point. And so I kind of took that concept of being together with other players and incorporated it into everything I did after that. As I look back now on my experiences on the server, I sit back and smile. Logging on, looking around, wandering around spawn, I think to myself, this really is a great server. The history, my friends, the freedom. This is why I love this server. And I love 2B2T.